Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn how to configure VTP, the VLAN trunking protocol, with a lab demo. So I've got the usual lab topology here. I've got my three switches, switch one through to switch three. Right now, I've configured trunks between each of the switches, but that's all of the configuration that I've done. I haven't created any VLANs anywhere, and I haven't created any access ports. So let's verify that. So I'll go on to switch one, and if I do a show run in here and go down to the configuration for interface gigabit ethernet zero slash one, you can see that I've configured it as a trunk port and the only VLAN that is configured right now is VLAN 199 for the native VLAN. So if I do a show VLAN brief, you can see that the sales and the eng VLANs have not been created yet. So I created the native VLAN so that I could do my trunk configuration. So that's how it's configured on switch one. It's the same on switch two and switch three. And if I do a show VTP status on here, I haven't changed this. So this is gonna be at the default where the VLAN domain name is currently null. There isn't one. And the VTP mode is server. That's the same on all of the switches. What I want to do in this lab, if we have a look at the topology again, I'm going to configure switch one as a VTP server, switch two will be VTP transparent, and switch three will be VTP client. So I'll configure the VLANs on the server. The VTP transparent switch two should pass that information on to the client and the VLAN should show up there. I'm also gonna to need to configure the VLANs on switch two because it's in transparent mode. So let's go from right to left. I'll configure the VTP client first. So I'll go on to switch three I'll just do a show VLAN brief on here so you can see there's no VLANs there yet. And a show VTP status, and it's the default of no domain name, and it is currently a server. So on here, I will say VTP domain. Let's make it flat box. And I need to go to global configuration before I can do that. So VTP domain flat box and VTP mode client. So I get a confirmation message that it's changed it to flat box and it's changed it to client mode. I'll do a do show VTP status and I should see that it's changed. So there is the domain name and it's client mode. So that is switch three configured. Next, I will do switch two. So on switch two, I don't want it per to participate in the VTP domain. If I do a show VTP status, it's also at the default settings. Actually, what's happened here on switch two is that it has picked up the domain name from the other switch, which is Flatbox. And it's still a server, which is the default. So I'll go to global configuration here and I will say VTP mode transparent. So it's gonna be independent for its VLAN configuration now. And I do show VTP status just to verify that it did take that. And yes, it is now transparent. The last one to do is switch one. And on switch one, let's do a show VTP status again. And I see that it's picked up the domain name as well, a flat box. So I'll go to global config. And if I do a VTP domain flat box in here, it's gonna tell me that the domain name was already set to that. And I'll say VTP mode server, and it's gonna tell me it was already a server. Okay, so that is VTP set up. 
all I need to do now is actually configure my VLANs. So again, I'll do a do show VLAN brief. I don't have any VLANs configured yet apart from the native VLAN for my trunks. So on the server, I'll say VLAN 10, name eng, and VLAN 20, name sales. And if I now look in the VLAN database here with a show VLAN brief, I can see that those VLANs have been created. If I go over onto switch three now, it didn't have any VLANs previously. I just scrolled up there. You can see that the engine, the sales VLANs weren't there before. But if I do a show VLAN brief now, I can see that it has learned about the eng and the sales VLANs from the server. If I go on to switch two and I do a show VLAN brief on here, the VLANs aren't showing up on there, the new ones, because it's transparent. It doesn't synchronize its database. Okay, next thing to do is to test everything is working. So I will configure the switch ports. To save me typing this in, I've put it into a text file. So let me bring that up. So on switch one, interfaces fast zero, one and two are in the eng VLAN 10 and port three is in the sales VLAN. So let me copy this and then paste it in on switch one. And I've also got a config ready for switch three where fast zero slash one and two are in the sales VLAN and fast zero three is in the eng VLAN. So I'll copy that and paste that into switch three, paste that in. And let's have a look at the topology diagram. So there you see the eng PCs, I've configured their access ports now on switch one and on switch three as well for eng three. And I've also configured my access ports for sales as well. So now if I go on to the eng one PC and I'll try to ping 10.10.10.12, which is eng three, which is on the other far end switch. And when I try this, it's going to fail. And the reason for that is if I go back onto the switches again, you'll see on switch three, if I do a show VLAN brief, I've got the engine, the sales VLANs, and I've also put my clients into the correct access VLAN. So that was on switch three and the same thing on switch one show VLAN brief, it knows about the VLANs and the clients are put into the correct VLAN. The problem is if I have a look at switch two, if I can find it in here, when I do a show VLAN brief in here, it doesn't know about sales in the eng VLANs because this is VTP transparent. So looking at the topology diagram again, it comes in from switch one to switch two tagged with a dot one Q tag of the eng VLAN, but switch two doesn't know about the VLAN. So that's why the traffic is failing right now. So I need to go on to switch two and in global configuration, because it's transparent, I need to add my VLANs here as well. So I'll say VLAN 10, name eng, and VLAN 20, name sales. If I now go back onto my engineering PC, try the ping again, it will probably fail for a little while. I need to give this a second to come up. So let's just watch the request time out. And it might take a few pings. I might even have to do the ping again before it's gonna actually come up and allow the traffic through. Okay, there we go. So the last one succeeded. And if I do the ping again, I'll see they're all going to work now. So I've now got end-to-end -end connectivity between my eng PCs. Let's check that sales is working as well. This should also be good. So I'm on sales one. I will ping 
sales three. So sales one is on switch three. Sales three is on switch one on the other side. It's at 10.10.20.12, and this works just fine too. So I've got end to end connectivity between my PCs in the same VLANs, but if I go on a sales PC and I try to ping an engineering PC, this is going to fail because it's in a different IP subnet. And if we have a look at our topology diagram, I don't have a router yet. So we need to configure inter VLAN routing to allow that to work. That's what we're going to do in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.